Hello, my name is Jenna Bosiger, and thank you for watching my Crypty Cryptids YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to hit the like. And let's get started with this episode to explore the state of Indiana. This episode is about Indiana's cryptids and best kept secrets. State of Indiana a lot of different types of cryptids besides the usual suspects of dogmen and Bigfoot type creatures. And if you have been issued a Bigfoot hunting license, important update on that. They've all been revoked, punishable, by a lifetime in prison. So make sure when hunting for Bigfoot, it's only with your camera. From Indianapolis and down, there are some amazing forested areas that look dense and just beautiful habitat for cryptids. And sure enough, there are reports of cryptids in many of these locations. But a lot of the reports are of unusual types of cryptids, like there was even a report of a horned humanoid that suddenly appeared near the Sugarloaf Mounds in Indiana. That may sound like a strange cryptid sighting, but the truth is horned creatures have been reported in Indiana for a long time. Several re news reports of horned skeletons were found near the White River. Another really unusual and well-known cryptid comes from Cherubusco, and it's reported that there is a huge, giant, turtle-like creature that has been reported in this area. And back in the day, these reports were taken very seriously. In fact, several underwater missions were attempted to find this creature, and it looks like there was some money put into it. Besides just using nets, they had underwater divers looking for this creature. And as it turns out, the largest turtle reported today is six feet long. But back in the dinosaur times, there is a massively gigantic turtle that outsizes all of the known ones of the day. I suppose an overgrown six-foot turtle could be quite intimidating. Be on the lookout for the Churubusco monster. UFOs have also been reported in Indiana and continue to this day. This one from 1952 where there were hundreds of witnesses. I suppose they're going to say mass hallucination. But Franklin dogfight alerts state troopers. Three flying saucers were spotted by hundreds of Hoosiers, including police and military personnel over South Central Indiana early today. The objects appeared to have a dogfight over Franklin and disappeared as dawn approached. Troopers from three state police posts, Indianapolis, Selmore, and Cornersville, kept a running check on the saucers for more than four hours. It says close encounters being reported in Culver. Strange lights in the sky puzzle residents. Culver, Indiana. From a security guard to a newspaper editor, dozens of residents in this small farming community have been seeing things in the sky. Since early October, talk is centered on the strange light patterns hoovering over the landscape. Greg Flagg, a security guard from Argos, has been keeping a log since he first spotted the lights on March 7th. He was driving to work at 9.45 p.m. when he saw a white triangular shaped light pattern. I just stopped on the road and got out of the car and watched, he said. That one was over 500 feet off the top of the car, he said, reading from his log. It moved extremely slow. Flagg didn't report the sightings to police, but did confide in his wife. Then, on October 3rd and 5th, he was driving with his family when the strange triangle-shaped lights appeared. And it goes on from there. This one, there's actually evidence left by the flying saucer. It says, flying saucer had a hot foot. 
two motorists found what what they have believed may be the footprints of a flying saucer last night on 161st Street, just east of the U.S. number 31 North Keystone Avenue. State police investigated and opened and opted it was more likely that a cherry bomb had been set off. They were driving north when they spotted a big fiery white ball of light in the sky rising from the ground. They said another car also stopped and the occupant also said he saw the object. They didn't get the name of the other driver. Investigating, Edward Stanley found a strange set of markings in the pe- on the pavement of 161st Street. There were three circles, each about, f- each about a foot in diameter, arranged in the form of a tripod and nearly, and nearly touching each other in the middle of the markings. It appeared the asphalt pavement had been melted slightly. There have been dogman creatures reported in northern Indiana and Hidden Valley Lake. They're said to be mud mermaids in the area, and they are creatures, amphibious lizards with human features, and locals affectionately call them mud mermaids. The best, most well-known cryptid, I'd say, in all of Indiana is the mill race monster. He was green and covered in fur, but he had claws. And he was seen by multiple eyewitnesses, and it caused a real stir in the area because after these reports, there was a monster hunt. And it was big. And they had to shut down all of Mill Race Park because everybody came from out of the woodwork to hunt down this creature. In Columbus, Indiana, a hairy green monster is roaming the west side of the Columbus, scarring cats and women and hiding in woods near Mill Race Park. Police and a dog catcher believe the monster is a man wearing a green blanket and a green mask enjoying a frolic in balmy Indian summer weather and by the light of the harvest moon. But large groups of armed persons are roaming the park along the East Fork and the White River's headwaters in search of the monster. Police are worried that one of the hunters will shoot another monster hunter or the monster will learn that the beast they have slain is a man. Dubbed the hairy green monster of Milray's Park, the beast has been spotted at least four times in the last eight days. It left a paw mark on the hood of a car at about 10.30 p.m. November 1st when frightened six young women in the park before it disappeared into the woods. Some believe the monster hides in the lagoon at the mouth of the Flat Rock. Others believe it's lair in the dense woods of the park. And several people got a fleeting glimpse of the monster Tuesday and Thursday night. Yesterday, Columbus City dog catcher Rick Duckworth said he saw the monster. They had been dispatched to the park to rescue two scared cats high up in a tree. When studying ways to rescue the cats, Duckworth said he saw the monster standing at least 200 feet away and that the beast took off as fast as a deer. And the media is reporting it, but also kind of trying to downplay it because it's attracting a lot of negative attention. This one is pretty hard to read. Tourist Tale Beast. Warden captures wild man after desperate fight. Warden Fenton captured a wild man single-handed in the Epworth Park At 3 o'clock this morning, a skirmish in the brush between the unknown and the warden resulted in the overpowering of the former. He is now in the county jail. Blair telephoned the warden that a wild man was hiding under the Union Pacific Bridge when the man had left his hiding but was tracked into the timber in a pile of brush. The warden discovered the man 
As the warden appeared, the wild man made a lunge with a long club. The warden pulled his gun and ordered the man to surrender. A search of the his general appearance was that of a wild man. He made no statement upon vigorous resistance, but was taken into the asylum. It was the man is crazy and dangerous. So yeah, I don't know if that was a real human or um or what. Here's another one, though, also from Indiana, Michigan City, Indiana. A wild child, strange as it may appear, it is currently reported that a very generally believed that a wild child is now roaming a large among the hills and vicinity of Fish Lake. It is reported to be about four feet high and covered with a light chestnut brown hair. It runs with great velocity and when pursued as it often has been the case the most frightful and hideous yells and seems to make efforts in speaking it has been during the summer months apparently whining most piously how this creature has come here or what its history may be we leave to conjecture it may be proposed Wandered in the woods, grew up with the animals in the forest. This is very strange. The creature from the GM sludge pit. It sounded almost like a sci-fi movie on the Late Late Show. They cleaned out a sludge pit at Delphi Interior Lighting's Plant 9 and found a creature. The contents of the pit, antifreeze, stripper, oil, and polyol... polyol chemical mixture used in the formation of plastic bumpers certainly makes it easy to conjure up spooky things that could live in such an environment. Except this creature was more like a fishing worm or night crawler, six to eight inches long with tentacles and maybe eyes. There were several of them and workers captured one, killed it and put it in a jar. Then the jar disappeared. Who stole the creature? No one knows. But thankfully, at this time anyways, they're considered harmless. Environmentalists say it was a type of bacteria that would form when organic matter is placed in fresh water and one of the sprinklers broke. Wild child in the woods, 300 people, 300 persons in pursuit. That part of Carroll County adjoining this on the west near Burlington and the western part of the county as we learn today, as we learn Saturday, is very much excited about a male child from 7 to 10 years old that has been seen several times in the woods but has not yet been taken. It has approached children quietly but flees from the approach of a man or a woman. The place has been found where it slept the preceding night and has eaten f a frog. Today, several hundred people regularly organized are out on the hunt. We hope before going to press to hear that the mighty child has been taken, has been overtaken. The mighty child? Okay. I want to read this most fascinating article about, it's titled, Lost Race of Mysterious Men of a Strange Civilization. And I've got it in pieces so that I can read it. Efforts are now being made to induce the owner to permit extensive excavations that the real history of the peculiar race may be ascertained. Pieces of pottery that have been dug up from the sides of the mound show that the builders made use of vessels which measured five and six and even eight feet across. The curvature of the broken pieces established the fact that the vessels were of immense size, larger than any found in any other parts of the country. Historians are at a loss to know what the big crude vessels were used for. In the course of time, Indians took charge of the mound and used it for a lookout. Excavations made in the mound have revealed skeletons, rel relics of barbaric warfare and crude implements of stone. The skeletons are those of large men, larger than men of today, nor of 
or of the Indian that once prowled through the picturesque valley. Conclusions reached by, by scientific men who make the study of antiquity and primi primitive remains are to the effect that the men were erected as an altar to the sun god whom aboriginals everywhere worshipped. That it took thousands of years to complete it is unquestioned. The mound covers 10 acres and represents century after century of hard work with nothing but the pyramids of ancient Egypt to compare. The mound, located on what is now known as the Sipple Farm, only once were excavations of any extent made, bones and relics and pieces of pottery that were found, but the geolog geologists and scientific investigations the country round were beginning to get interested the owner put an end to further investigations. He insisted that the remains of those who had been there should be allowed to lie undisturbed. On the sides of the mound are stumps of large trees which must have been centuries old when they fell before the woodman's axe. Effort has been made to ascertain the age of the mound from these stumps, but no satisfactory results have been obtained. Investigations made by geologists, anthropologists, paleontologists have been established the fact that the mound was built by a particular race of people that lived in the Pretty White River Valley centuries and centuries ago. Traces of their civilization are yet to be found. The Even now, occasionally turns up a yellow and particularly sh peculiarly shaped skull. White bones, while bones and stone implements of many kinds are found throughout the region. One of the mounds in Indiana, the Wapasiike Sipiwi Mound in Indiana, they have a, well, I guess you could say a life-size Bigfoot statue at this mound site, and I find that to be very interesting. And when reading about the Wapasiike Sipiwi, I learned that the mounds were created and in use from 500 to 1650 AD. The Europeans arrived to Indiana in 1679, so the fact that they disappeared in 1650 tells me that it was done because of the European arrival and that would mean they're still possibly there hiding today. And I don't know what the connection they're making here with Bigfoot and the giant mound builders is, but possibly it is that they are one and the same. Indiana also has its own Stonehenge. And there's a place called Browning Mountain and they're gigantic stones in a circular position you know explain that oh this is Jug Rock and I thought that's very interesting as well and Indiana also has sand dunes right along the Lake Michigan and these sand dunes are incredibly deep and so I read somewhere that Indiana has its own serpent mound, snake mound, and I searched and searched and searched and searched, and the only thing I could really come up with, and it's not something you can see from an aerial map, you'd have to be down on the ground looking for this, but in Anderson, at the Anderson Mounds site in Indiana, there is some sort of a strange snake rock formation. And then I looked, while I was looking for the Indiana Mounds, I found some other really, like this little mound site, which is adorable. Isn't that cute? Stone Mounds. Indiana's Adena Yin Yang, Yin -yang Mounds. Using LiDAR technology, they're able to look through the farms and look through trees and whatever else is on the ground and see these earthworks 
ancient, ancient earthworks made by mound builders. And you can see, you know, shapes appearing that you maybe normally would not have been able to find, which just makes these cultures all the more ancient. But there are earthworks. This one's in a field that's privately owned. This winter solstice sunrise solar mound with archaeoastronomy technology involved in the making in Newcastle, Indiana. And that is in between Mound Hate Park. There's more than one earthwork spread over quite a distance, all in alignment with this solar winter solstice sunrise. That would be so great to go there during that time to see that. That would be something really cool to do. December 21st, be, you know, right standing somewhere in this alignment to experience it. But the most populated mound site in all of Indiana was the Angel Mound site. And it's quite a site indeed. There were so many artifacts that they got from this site. And it was spread out over a large period, a large, a very large area. And they excavated it. And when looking up where the mound builders from Angel Mounds went, I found out that they disappeared. And when you go to look up the date that they disappeared, it comes up 1400. Here, I have the official National Register of Historic Places which says that they disappeared in 1600. And you can see that they've checked the box and it's checked, you know, up to 1600. A lot of this is redacted. They disappeared in 1600. 1492, Columbus came to America. De Soto came with his Florida expedition was from 1539 to 1543. And so the Europeans arrived to Indiana in 1679 is the official date given. And the official date given for the disappearance of the mound builders is 1600. They don't know what happened or why the mound builders from Angel Mounds disappeared. To me, and it's pretty obvious they disappeared to hide themselves from the Europeans. And so some of these mound builder tribes disappeared like within a hundred years before the arrival of the Europeans. And to think that that is a coincidence, there's no black and white proof, like, you know, DNA proof or photographic evidence of why they disappeared or record of it. But within 79 years, but if that's true, then they may still be there. And maybe the giants, the giant mound builders, went hiding underground and come out at night and are occasionally seen and reported as Bigfoots. Indiana. And I look forward to going there someday and exploring the state myself based on my research. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, bye!